guys, so today I'm back at my desk because I have an amazing piece to show you from the Midnight Crafter. Now, some of you may remember a while ago I showed you this amazing little shop that the Midnight Crafter had made me. I'll link the whole video down below, but I asked her to make me a custom piece. I really didn't mind what it was as long as it was kind of spooky and Halloween themed, and she came up with the Haunted Bat Shop, which is amazing. I absolutely loved this piece. It has like little features like the little drawers open and there's things in the drawers. She's got my cat on there she's got my dragon of course there's pumpkins and various different other aspects which are all kind of things I'm interested in when I got this I was absolutely over the moon and honestly still to this day every time I look at it it makes me feel so so happy inside I'm not even exaggerating right now I had a dream the other night that my house was on fire and this was my main priority to get out of my house this was the thing I needed to go back and get so I hope that kind of puts into perspective how much I absolutely love this piece and I really appreciate all the effort that went into it I have done a full tour of this haunted bat shop um, I've made a video before about it so I will leave that video down below and also the Midnight Crafter herself did put a video together about it regarding the crafting process behind it and how she made certain parts of it because she does collect a lot of these miniatures and she does make a lot of the elements herself so the Midnight Crafter does sell on various different platforms she has a folksy account she has an eBay account and she used to sell on Etsy so she does sell her pieces in various different places now the best way to find out where and when she's selling pieces is to follow her YouTube channel so I will leave that down below and it's through her YouTube channel which I found the piece which I'm going to show you today so I ordered um, this piece it came as you can see really nicely packaged in a box covered in the word fragile and inside of the box was loads of bubble wrap there was also loads of these thingy majiggies to keep it kind of safe and right at the bottom of this box it is literally covered in Halloween um, confetti so I will take all of these out and get all the confetti out but I just wanted to show you how nicely this was packaged there's also some really cool confetti in here like these little green ghosts which I haven't actually seen before um, and I'm very excited because I have been doing my Halloween scrapbook and I've been kind of collecting all my confetti on one page so it's really nice to have some more pieces to kind of add to that so I just wanted to show you how nicely packaged it was and it did get here completely safely with no breaks or anything she did also include a little card in there which was really nice and I believe she hand makes these cards from the ones I've received before from her she does have kind of Halloween stamps which she stamps on there and then she adds the colours where she wants. She's also kind of added various different like glittery parts. It's such a gorgeous little autumny card and um, with our autumn leaves and of course a little pumpkins. So I was so excited when I saw this. Some of you may know that I do collect kind of Halloween and spooky cards so I will be adding this to my collection. Inside she added some really nice little spooky stickers and she also thanked me um, for my purchase of the shelves which I'm going to show you today. As I said, she does have a YouTube channel and also a Facebook and an Instagram, so I will link all of those down below for you. So I think it's probably time for us to get into the actual shells themselves, and as soon as I saw these, I knew I needed to add them to my collection. So I'll give you a second to take that all in. I love miniature things. I love obviously Halloween and spooky things. And what I particularly loved about this piece is it completely reminded me of my room. My room is very jumbled. It has a lot of like little oddities and strange little ornaments um, and books and things. And this kind of was everything I loved in one little set of shelves. So this is called her Rare Oddities Shelves. And as I said, she did make a video about it, which kind of went more into the construction of it so I will leave a link down to that video as well if you're interested to find more about how she made this but since I got the haunted bat shop last year and I have this one from this year I think I may make it a yearly thing if the minute I craft it is up for it I get at least one of these kind of crafted miniature things as I said this one wasn't particularly like made for me or anything it was just a general piece which she was showing um, I think she said she was crafting this over the space of a year I know much with everyone who does crafts we go in and out of various different crafting techniques and I think she was on and off making this throughout last year but I was really excited to see it finished and as I said as soon as I saw the video I really wanted it so I thought I'd give you a bit of a an oddities shelf tour today because 
honestly, when I bought it, I was so in love with it. And when I got it in person, I was absolutely blown away because there were so many other details which I hadn't actually noticed from the photos um, and the video which she put up. So I'm gonna start kind of shelf by shelf. So on the top, it says owls, bats, and other night creatures. So of course, straight away, we're hitting off with one of my favorite animals. Um, and then it says rare oddities. Now, the actual kind of backing shelves of this seems to be made out of a wood, but she's done various different like crackle effects to give it kind of a aged look. Again, she does have videos on her channel talking about how she does create these effects. And then this kind of rare oddities part is like a paper that's been kind of stuck on there but it's really really nicely applied we've got a death head moth up here um, there's kind of like a steampunky sort of watch going on there's a little skull that's been added and various different flowers and things up at the back and then we have this owl um, who does stick up a bit from the top is very nicely attached on there and he has these two little diamond eyes and as we go across you can see there's some sort of like a butterfly behind him and again another kind of clock sort of steampunky thing and then right down in the center at the top we have a little bat which has kind of been bought out and sort of risen up against the backing so straight away it's a good start we have some of my favorite animals we have our owl and bats and then there's of course other night creatures to come so then as for actual miniatures there's a lot to take in um, i'm going to start just again with the background right behind all of these there's little kind of potion bottles um, and various different like ingredients bottles and things which have been kind of added to the background so when looking make sure you look behind because there are tiny little details i think that may be a little sand timer behind there as well so she's added some really nice little details in the background before actually adding the proper kind of 3d um, oddities and miniatures so we have a skull um, here at the side we then in the background have this kind of glass sort of swan I want to say or maybe kind of a stalk or something um, we have some bottles so this one says deadly and then the one across says rare brain juice I know she does a lot of thrifting and things to find these bottles she does make some bottles I think for example like this one she makes them out of little beads which I think is so so clever she get she recycles kind of necklaces and beaded things and creates bottles out of beads which I would never have thought of doing um, so then next up we have these three little mice sat on a stone and it says a family now behind it looks like it says love is so I think altogether it does say love is a family, um, but straight up at the front you can see these cute little mice. Then we go along to this plant in the background. It is in a little plant pot and flowers have been added to the front of the plant pot. Hopefully you can just see them down there. Um, and she's added this kind of almost like fake grass kind of felty stuff to the top. Um, some little leaves coming out and then a little skull on a spring so you can move it along. I know this looks nothing like Audrey 2 out of the Little Shop of Horrors. I don't know why but it just completely reminded me of the Little Shop of Horrors which is one of my favourite films when I was younger so I was really excited about that element. So again we come to the little bottle that she's made um, out of beads and then of course I was straight away as soon as I saw this I was sold. She's made an all-seeing pumpkin. So she's got what looks almost like a plastic pumpkin. It's got a cute little stalk coming out um, and she's added some eyes and made it the all-seeing pumpkin it also looks like she's put some paint and things around the top of the stalk just to give it a little bit of a shine it's all these tiny little details which he's kind of added in which really make this piece i think then as we go across we have a little skeleton sat at the back um and then there's the sand timer i mentioned and in front of it it has another little potion bottle and if you do look right down there, you'll see it has a red label and that does say poison on it. And then we have right at the front a little frog holding a ladybird. Now again, another little thing um, which sold me was this frog just because I used to collect this type of frog. I can't remember what the brand is, but I had like 101 of these different frogs in different poses. So I was again very excited um, that it had that little link. Then as you go across, she's added a witch's ball. And in the video, she does talk about how she made this I believe the part the ball is stood on um, she made out of maybe beads um, or kind of the accents that go around beads um, and she's added a glass ball and she did mention that she added this kind of cotton wool material inside to make it look like it's a magical ball again if you do watch her video she will probably explain it a lot better than I just did um, and then in front of the ball it does say magic and as we carry on along you can see that there is another little bottle and this has got a label on it but I 
can't for the life of me read what it said it's been printed very small um, and she's added the detail of the string around it and she's put a little cork in the bottle as well and then finally for this shelf she's added two little toadstools which I actually gave her once in a box which is really nice that she was able to use them and create something amazing out of them I do if I'm sending her something on the post like to add little things like little um, toadstools just because I know that she'll be able to use them for something and case proven um, and on the front of this toadstool which again I didn't really know in her video there is a little door so it's kind of turned into like an enchanted fairy um, toadstool and if any of you have actually seen my legitimate oddity shelves you'll know that mine are also covered in both toadstools and fairy houses um, and then she has a little sleeping pixie I think she called it um, which is kind of just sleeping in front of the magic toadstool so I imagine that they probably live in there and then there is a, another little potion bottle again I believe made out of beads and it says pumpkin flavoured liquor so on top of the smaller toadstool there is this green squirrel um, is he holding something he seems to be holding something green maybe like a green nut or something again she did mention in her video that she added this just because it would be an oddity if you did find a green squirrel so I thought that was a really nice touch and right in the background over here is a little spook which I really love. I have a few of these little spooky charms in various different things which I've got from the Midnight Crafter and it's also in my Haunted Bat Shop as well so it's a nice little tie to add all of those together. Also along the edge of the shelf it says bewitched, bewitched, bewitched and then actually the shelf is lined in this really nice kind of orange and yellow kind of patterned paper so it all is very very nicely finished. So on to the second shelf. The second shelf starts off with some books. Again, she has done tutorials before on her channel as to how to make these books. I absolutely love the effect it has because it does actually look like there are pages up there as well. Um, so the books all have different spines. So the first one says Night Creature. We then have a very kind of old looking book. We have a Herbology book, a Bats book, which I'd be very interested to read. We then have Deadly Delicacies, Owls and magic from A to Z so that's the first little cluster of books which she's added in hopefully you can see here in the background she has added more potion bottles which are kind of flat against the back of the actual shelf it definitely gives it that more kind of cluttered curiosity look but first off we have a little kind of bell jar um, and it says vampire on the front and it has a doll's head in there which does actually have legitimate doll's hair which is a really nice um, detail. It looks like she may have beheaded some kind of Barbie or something to make this. Um, she's added little fangs and she's painted the eyes and things to give it more of a vampire look and then right behind the vampire hopefully you can see she's added another little corked potion bottle. Again it has a little sticker on it but I can't read it. It's printed very very small um, but it has lots of kind of green glitter and things in it. So then we come across to sort of the middle of the shelf and this part is kind of what I feel is the Alice in Wonderland part of the whole piece. So we have a little kind of cup and saucer, like a teacup and saucer. And on the teacup it says Spook's Delight and she's actually painted the top of this teacup kind of brown so it looks like a tea and she said that she'd added the little ghost as kind of like a ghost marshmallow or maybe like cream which again reminded me uh, um, of something I did around Halloween where I got my new pumpkin mug and it took me forever but I made the cream look like a little ghost so that kind of was another little feature which I really really liked. Now before I move on to the Mad Hatter there is a little picture in the background. When you do move it it starts off with like a regular picture of a man but as you move it he changes to like an evil skull. Hopefully you can see there he's got very kind of dark hollowed out eyes but when you move it this way he turns into a very nice looking gentleman with a very interesting moustache. And this picture in the background has got a really nice frame and things around it as well which is a really nice little finishing touch. And unfortunately I don't think it will show up on camera but you maybe have to see a little bit of blue um, behind the Mad Hatter but she's added a tiny little watering can um, back there. Oh you can just see it. Um, and some more potion bottles and things. So right at the front we have the Mad Hatter. He has his classic hat on with the little card in the top saying in the style of 10 over 6. Um, he's got a bow tie he's a very kind of cartoony looking um mad hatter and his hat actually does flip up and he does have a kind of speckled head so i'm not sure if maybe he i 
I don't know, I thought maybe he could have been a salt shaker or something before, but he is very tiny. Maybe that's just a sort of speckled head um, detail. Um, but again, another little kind of moving feature to this piece. Then as we go across behind the Mad Hatter, she's added some more potion bottles. And then right at the front, she's added this one, um, which again is made out of beads and on it it says Midnight Mead. And then finally on the shelf there is a giant toad and wasp which is quite literally a giant toad and a wasp. Um, this is made out of like a plastic so his wings do kind of move a bit and they are see through so it does give it a very kind of almost realistic look and hopefully you'll be able to see but she's added kind of flowery parts into the background and again more potion bottles on the back there just to give it that more like authentic look. And along at the bottom of this shelf she's added various different numbers from 23 to 41 um, so it's kind of like a ruler effect. And the shelf itself has been lined in this really nice material and I believe she's used the same material which she's lined this shelf with as the material on the back so I will show you the back later so you can see how gorgeous that paper is. So we're halfway there, there's still two more shelves to go. So this is the third shelf, again there's various different bottles and things um, added to the background. There's also kind of like a bell jar that's been cut out with a little um, moth kind of in it right there in the background. So again more attention to detail back there. So straight up on the front we have this gardening mole with a little kind of gardening hood. Um, then we come across to this little blue and white cat which again the Midnight Crafter did mention it would be rather an oddity to find a blue cat and then straight along from it we have a little sand timer um, it is made out of glass and I think she said that the outside part was brass or she painted it to look like brass but again really gorgeous little piece then as we go across it says on the front enchantments potions and spells and there are a few spell bottles um, behind it so we have a witch's brew again made out of beads so so clever and it looks so effective we have a little green one there and then also this one that says mermaid scales um, and it does have a little cork in it and if you look at it um, kind of from the side you'll see that there are little flakes of glitter and things in there which is how you probably would imagine mermaid scales to look if they were bottled um, right in the back there there is a big shell and on the shell is a bat now I know that this shell is kind of meant to link in with this sort of sea theme that's going on a little bit further along um, but to me it kind of looks like a full moon like a bat on a full moon so of course I was into that so then we have um, a little kind of wooden block with a little man sat on it and she's given it the label Tom Thumb at the front um, which is of course down to the fact that he is very tiny and then we have a little um, dolphin is the word I was looking for and in the back we have some more spooky things we have a little dancing skeleton um, there's also another skeleton in a coffin and it has like a red background and there is hopefully you can see some more little potion bottles and there's one with like a raven or a crow on it and in front of the dancing skeletons was another thing that completely sold me which is a talking seagull. So again another strange fact is that I absolutely love seagulls. They're kind of my joint favourite birds with magpies. Um, don't ask me why I've always just really liked seagulls and on my oddity shelves I do actually have loads of little seagull ornaments which look very much like this although they aren't talking seagulls. Um, so again that was another little thing which I thought this piece is so perfect. Um, so yes I was very excited by that and then as we go along the shelf ends with some more books. So going from this side in we've got under the full moon, magic and spells, things that go creep in the night, owls, bats and other night creatures and also dragons, folklore and fiction. Again I love these books, they also tie in with the books that we had on the shelf before, they look so gorgeous. She, she has even added like details to the covers of the books as well, they're like very nicely finished off and they do look really professional and lifelike it probably is the word I'm looking for and again I'm just so blown away by these kind of resources that she has to make these they're all I'm not sure if she prints them or if she has paper that's pre-printed but it is all very high quality paper that she's been using and then along the front of the shelf this one says rare oddities over and over again which of course it is an oddity shelf so that works very nicely and on the actual shelf itself lined got lots of numbers um, and it's in like an orange and a yellow color so we've got one more shelf to 
go which you can see is this bottom shelf here again she's added more details like flowers and things to the sides and there's some like potion bottles and things behind all these miniatures straight up on the front there's another little kind of golden potion bottle that she's made out of beads i believe we have a little praying mouse which looks very cute tiny glass elephant which i would like to think is there because he is so tiny um again we have potion bottles and things in the background and then we have a fairy coach so there is this tiny little metal coach which has been added in which is so so gorgeous it's very very detailed and it's so so pretty um behind the coach there is a another little skeleton there in a coffin with a purple background we then have the rare green owl who's kind of stood there waving we've got more potion bottles kind of flat against the background and then some more actual kind of 3d ones made out of various different beads and these are all really gorgeous beads this one seems to be like kind of glass and these two seem to be sort of lined with an almost like floral pattern and again she's kind of used the different accents to kind of give it a more ornate look and they have a little sign at the front saying brews and potions and there is a bottle of hoot of owl which i'm sure the the green owl is really enjoying um and bottled essence of ghost which i think is very very exciting if i tip this back hopefully you'll be able to see the background slightly better there is also a little button of a bat which i think i may have actually given the midnight craft it as well because i did have a whole pack of these bats although i wouldn't be surprised if she had found some herself on ebay because she knows all the best places to shop on ebay and then there is another little bird behind that essence of ghost bottle which i'd like to think was either a magpie um or again another seagull to add in with my favorite birds theme and then we have on the shelves um a little seal there's a tiny little skull hidden at the back and finally we have this bottle ship which says ship in a bottle found in the bermuda triangle and at the bottom of this shelf it does say charmed and the shelf itself is lined with this sort of floral pattern so as you can see these shelves are jam packed and they are so so well made i love all the little details again it's one of those things which i feel like the more you look at it the more things you discover but the midnight craft doesn't stop there she doesn't just decorate the front bit which um is the bit you'll see the most of she does decorate the sides as well so on the sides of this one it has a little owl at the top um, which correlates with the owl that's on the front and also a skeleton man with a little kind of top hat on there and again that I feel like it really sort of ties in with the skeleton man that is sat just there in the background sat in my um, little haunted bat shop so again another little thing which ties them together and then on the other side we have the skeleton man again but it also has this kind of bell jar with a skull in it and flowers and it does say number 31 underneath which i'd like to think is for the 31st of october and before i go on to the back of the actual shelves themselves i did also want to mention that she has lined these parts of the shelves which are the bit that touches the actual surface with felt which i thought was such a nice little thought just to stop it from scratching or anything not that it matters on this old desk um but i just thought that was a really nice kind of attention to detail thing she's added and then this is the back um of the shelves which as you can see is as gorgeous as the front just these attention to details when i do things like this i do often leave the back of it kind of plain and boring so it's so like nice that she's able to kind of finish everything off i've just put this here just because it has her name there and i'm not sure whether or not she wants her full name um on camera but the actual kind of material she's used on the back it's like a paper with this gorgeous paisley design and i love the fact that there's little spider webs and things in it there's also some kind of moths flying around there it has a very sort of bright and floral look but still with those little kind of spooky elements and then she's written this sign on the back which says rare oddities a curious collection of all things weird and wonderful created and designed by the midnight crafter and she's stuck some little bats around there some little cat paw prints and of course a cute little black cat <sighs> which we know i love my black cat so there you go that is the second piece which i've bought from the midnight crafter i love it so so much it is definitely another one of my now favorite things which i own i recently did a 
interview with Norwegian Halloween and she created a page on her blog about me and one of the things I mentioned is that one of my favourite um, items would be the shop that the Midnight Crafter made me previously so definitely I feel like if I was asked that question again I'd probably add this in with my answer as well. I am just so so pleased with it, it's so nicely made. As you can see it's all in kind of pristine condition, everything is really nicely kind of glued on there. The first time I got something from the Midnight Crafter I did worry that it would just all kind of fall off. Honestly you can put like a bit of pressure on things, not that I would, um, but you can put pressure on the pieces and they wouldn't fall off. Um, so again, really, really nicely made. If you're interested in finding anything like this, I definitely, definitely suggest going over and subscribing to The Midnight Crafter. It would also really help for the fact that YouTube isn't being too kind to small creators. And sadly, um, she is being kind of penalised as such for not having um, over a thousand subscribers. If you guys are interested in seeing more pieces like this, even if you just want to see them rather than buying them, I definitely, definitely would suggest going over to The Midnight Crafter, even if it's just for some crafting inspiration. On Honestly, since I received this piece, I've been in such a crafty mood. I said I'll leave all the links and everything you need to know down below as to where to find the Minute Crafter. So thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below. If it's sunny where you are, I hope you enjoy the shade and I'll see you next time. Bye!